Hi, how are you today? Okay, today I'm going to show you something very interesting, something very amazing, which is to set the default layout for pivot table. So as you know, we all use pivot table, I always use pivot table, but we all have this problem. Okay, so for example, this is a pivot table, okay, that uh, if you put all the fields in, right, then this is what you get as default layout, okay, but this is what I want, or maybe this is what you want, okay, and you will always and you always want this kind of uh, formatting or layout whenever you create a pivot table, not just for this instance, but also for other instance and um, other kinds of data that you encounter moving forward. Okay, so this is what this is what you're encountering right now. Okay, and you always need to edit okay to the layout that you always want. Okay, but and you want it to apply in future as well. So this is what I'm going to teach you today. Okay, so it's it's exciting. Okay, I uh, hope you will learn something new. Okay, so we're going to achieve this at the end of the video today. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so I have a table over here. Okay, and this table is formatted. It's a, it's a, it's a formal table. Okay, so we are, what we are going to do is to okay, create a new pivot table. Alright, okay, so go to insert, pivot table, and new worksheet. Alright, okay, so I'm going to put city uh, over here under the rows, and category under the rows, and total price. Alright, so as you can see, this is the default layout, right? Okay, so let's transform into something that I want. Okay, so for example, okay. I don't want this layout. I want it to be outline form. Okay. And I want the subtotals here are uh, displayed on top. I want it to be below. Okay. At the bottom. Alright. And I want it to be um metered, separated, each table to be separated from the rest. Okay. So I shall go to blank rows, uh, insert blank line after each item. Okay, so this looks neater to me. Okay, so really you want to explore that, right? And at the end of it, we have the total over here. Okay. So what will happen is okay, you have this pivot table, right? Okay, you can save the file. Okay, and when you open a new one, or when you have a uh, data that comes in, uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna create another pivot table, and you're gonna do this formatting again. Okay, so what you are gonna do now is to make it make this the default layout, so that when you load the uh, when you create pivot tables in future, okay, you will use this favorite layout of yours, right? Okay, but before that, let's go into a few things. Okay, so let's let's do some uh, even uh, let's do further adjustments over here. So I will go to uh, pivot table analyze and options. Okay. So over here, we have uh, for empty cells, show nothing, okay? But I want it to be zero, all right? Because I want it to display zero uh, rather than, than nothing, okay? So this is uh, one of my favorites that I will always uh, need to use, okay? Uh, under total of filters, I will want uh, to allow multiple filters per field, okay? I will explain this in a while, right? And under data, I want it to refresh data when opening the file, okay? So meaning that if you, if you change some data over um, back in the table, but you didn't refresh the pivot table. Okay, when you close the file, when you close the file, and you open the file again, okay, the pivot table will be refreshed. Okay, so we can take a look at this. Okay, all right. Okay, so let's click. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to show you. So remember the first one. What I did was to show empty cells. To sh to show zero for empty cells. Right. Okay. So over here, I'm going to insert a category called ice cream. I'm going to go back to full data. Okay. I'm going to copy Boston, this line over here. Okay, I'm going to change this to ice cream. And the product to chocolate. Okay, next I'm going to go to LA, LA City, and change this to ice cream and chocolate. Okay, so let's go back to our pivot table. We have Boston and LA. And we have uh, ice cream as the new categories, and and I'm going to refresh. Right, I'm going to refresh this. Okay, so now you have ice cream under Boston and uh, ice cream under LA, but you didn't have uh, ice cream under New York and San Diego. Okay, so we are we want to display ice cream, right? Okay, even though it's not even though New York and San Diego didn't sell any ice cream. Okay, so you just have to right click, go to few settings. Okay, under layer and print, show items with no data. Right, so now it show it showing zero. Okay, so previously, if you go to options, okay, it's blank. Okay, previously it's blank. Okay, previously it's blank. So I would like this option to be there in future to have a zero there for empty cells in future. Okay, okay so this is the first thing. And the second thing is, um, remember we talked about multiple filters, multiple filters. 
per value, right? So under the option, we have, sorry, allow multiple filters per view. Okay, allow multiple, multiple filters per view. So what I mean is, okay, for example, okay, so let, let me just disable this first to show you what this means. Okay, let me disable this. Okay. So we have the categories over here. Okay, we have the total price. So for example, if you want to, okay, just select cookies and crackers. Okay, so this will only show cookies and crackers, right? Okay, and you want to apply another filter over here, over uh, to say that you only want to see uh, total price above, let's say above um, 2,000. Above 2,000, which means this, 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 not this, this, not this, this, not this, right? Okay, so, so what will happen? Okay, so you notice that there's a tick over here, which means that you apply this filter. Okay, so if you go to value filters, I want um, to see prices, to see a total price that is more than 2,000. Okay, so it will display bars as well. Okay, so what this means is that you can only apply one filter at a time. Okay, so over here it displays bars because uh, it's only when when you when you when when you filter this part over here, okay, and then you filter this part under the value filters, it will only show the latest filter. Okay, it will disregard the previous filters. Okay, so what we want over here is to allow multiple filters. Okay, so if you click multiple filters, right, and you go back here, and you click cookies and crackers, okay, it will only show. It will show these two filters applied. So notice the two ticks over here, it will show these two filters applied. Okay? So this is what I want. Okay? Moving forward. Okay? And the last thing is to refresh the data when you open the file. Right? Okay? So uh, let me just undo this. Go filter. Okay. So what you're going to do is, okay, so you have already made the settings. Okay? So let's take over here for the last time. So under options, okay, so besides the, the layout that you have already done, okay, so let's recap. So what I've done is, I went to report layout, I click on apply form. I went to subtotal, I went to click on a uh, bottom of group, okay, and I inserted blank line after each item, right? And under the options, okay, under layout, I want zero for empty cells. Under totals and filters, I want to allow multiple filters, okay, and under data, I want to refresh data when opening a file. Alright? Okay, so let's click okay. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you go to file, okay, you go to more options, okay, go to data, and click on edit default layout, okay? And you can select on options over here to, to change the default layout, to apply them. But the better way is to import. Okay, you click import. Okay, so everything will change according to the default layout and options that you have set. Okay, so notice you see, bottom, uh, show, show subtotals, bottom of the group, uh, showing up like form, insert blank line after each item, and let's go to uh, pivot table options. Okay, do you remember that I selected zero for this, empty cells. I selected um, allow multiple filters. And under data, I select a refresh data. Let's save the file. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new worksheet okay, over here. I'm going to create a new worksheet. Right click, new. I'm going to create a new worksheet and test this out. Okay, so this is a new worksheet. Okay. So I'm going to copy the table over the data over to this image. Alright. Okay, so I have a new worksheet. I will copy there. This data over here. Right click, move or copy. Create a copy. And to the new workbook. This new Microsoft Excel worksheet. Okay. Okay. okay? And you want the new. New workbook, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert. Okay. Pivot table. New worksheet. Uh, pull city down. Pull the category down. And put the price. So there you go. We have the layout. Okay. So let's check the options as well. Let's put options. See, we have zero for empty cells. We have um uh allow multiple filters and we will we'll refresh the data when opening the file. Okay. So let's test the last one. Refresh data when opening the file. Right. So we have a uh, zero. We, we we are not showing anything under uh, New York and San Diego. Okay, for ice cream. Okay. So we are going to get ice. We are going to get ice cream over there for New York and San Diego. Okay. Then we will close the file and we will uh, open the file test. I'm going to come here and copy New York and San Diego and ice cream and chocolate for both. Okay. So now we have ice cream for New York and San Diego, right? So there should be something over here. Okay, there should be something over here. Okay, but I'm, I'm not going to refresh this. I'm going to I'm going to close the file and open the file again. Okay, so that you can see that it's in action. The refresh of data is in action. Okay, so I'm going to save this. Okay, so we're going to come back here again. We're going to close. Okay, and I'm going to open the file again. Okay, and you will see that. Okay, there will be ice cream for New York and San Diego. Right. So this is what I mean. We have ice cream under New York and ice cream under San Diego. All right. Okay, so I hope you have learned something new over here. 
So a quick recap is you have a bigger table, okay, and you always want to do uh certain kinds of uh, standard layouts, uh, and you want to make it default, and you have options, right, that you want to set, and you don't want to do this every time you create a pivot table. So what you are going to do is to go to file more options and data and edit default layout and click on import. Okay, so you just do everything that you want on the pivot table and you just click import and it will save for you. Okay, so I hope you like this video. If if you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Okay, and comment a video and say I like this video. Then I will do more even better videos for you. Okay, uh, until then, see you. Okay, bye.